We're here today on site at Hank's Discount Muffler. We've got a car up on a hoist here, and we're gonna do some reverse engineering on its exhaust system from powertrain right out to the tailpipe. So before I do that though, I just wanted to explain what I've got going on here. I've got my 12 foot platinum, my seventh axis arm here, and I've protected it with our sleeve too, just in case I'm hitting things I shouldn't be hitting. I've got it well protected. So what I've done though too, is I've set up my tripod in a location that I can track most of my data toward the front by the powertrain. And I know where I'm gonna end up in the back of this vehicle, closer to the differential. But what I've got is um, my calibration slash leapfrog cones. I've got plastered here, 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 and here. I've got them in strategic locations on the hoist and on the underbody so that I can hit them in both of these locations because I know I'm gonna to have to leapfrog to this location in the back. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna track, track each of the, of the cones in sequence. I'll put the arm down here and go right to the software and show you how I'm gonna put that together. I'll go right to the measure menu, point, comp off. The comp off point I use 100% when I do leapfrog inside of my cones. What it does is it takes a single point that is the center of the probe in the center of that cone. So it minimizes the amount of variation from multiple clicks around a sphere. So what I've got is the software is ready for me. I'm going to go up to the front side here on the hoist for my first comp off point. I'll lightly put the probe inside of that cone. One click and compensate. Now I'll lay the arm down for this because usually what I do 100% is I like to change the name on these cones. I like to give them a name that makes sense. Sometimes I'll put some some masking tape on or a paint pen if I'm on a tool. Um, in this situation I can pretty much name the cones where they're located on the underbody. So I'll say that this would be the driver's side front cone and say okay. Now it's assuming I'm gonna keep measuring cones, so I'm okay with that. So what I'll do is I'll measure the next three cones and then go back into review features and rename them just to make this a little bit quicker. So here's cone number two. So I lightly bury the cone in there, or the probe in the cone. One click on the green and compensate out. There the SAT file is saving the point. I hit the front button to say okay. And now I'll come up underneath here, passenger side in the rear. One click and I'm gonna compensate on that one as well. And say okay with the front button. And now to the fourth cone, which is located here on the rear, on the driver's side. I just lightly put the probe in, green button, and then I compensate with the red. And then I say okay to that. Now, one trick with this though, it's good to remember the sequence I went through so that when I rename the points that I followed that same sequence. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do a rename on these points and then come back in a minute and I'll show you how I'm gonna move the device to the rear end and then we'll do the leapfrog operation then. Now I've got all of my cones renamed in the system here in the SAT file. And instead of measuring all my content and then making my move, what I'll do is I'll just make my leapfrog right now just to do it as an example. And then I'll jump back into my measurement session to do the reverse engineering here after I give you guys this example here. But so now what I've got are four points that are comp off points in my cones. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go right to the devices menu and then to the move device position. That's the leapfrog. And notice what comes up on my screen. I have got four choices here that are my cones. So I'm gonna highlight all four of those cones. Minimum of three to use. Um, I don't even know what the maximum would be, but I think four is gonna be plenty good for this movement. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll highlight all four of these cones here, and I'm gonna say okay. Now what Pharaoh says is, all right then, move that device. So I'll say okay. Now notice my screen in the lower left Pharaoh's actually telling me, okay, you're gonna measure a point that's your driver side front cone. All right, well, that's good. That's the first one I measured. So we're all set up for that, but now let me move my arm to the location in the back. So I can just drag my 
tripod on over. And then pull my cart with that. In my position, I want to make sure that I can track the rear differential and how the exhaust actually comes out the tailpipe here. So I surely can reach both sides with this position here. All right, I do like that. And I want to make sure that I can still get my front cones. Oh, yeah. I'm golden with that. So right now it's still asking for measure point one, which is the driver's side front. So I'll lightly go into that. Green button and then compensate out. That's the new position then for that driver's side front cone. Now what I'll do is come to the second position here. And again, my lower left hand screen is gonna show me, measure the passenger side front. Green button, red button to compensate. There's the new position. Green button to get through that. I'm going to head over to this third cone here, and again, I'm following the same exact sequence I did prior to the movement. I'm in the cone, green button, red button, there's the new position. And then last, but not even the least, I'm going to go to the fourth cone here. Okay, I hit the red button to compensate there. Now, before I hit OK, I'm going to run back to my laptop a second and just kind of walk you guys through what we're going to see here. Now, when I say OK to this, my last cone, Ferro goes through and it re-establishes the device position based on that position, based on those four cones where they were before. And now when I've moved the arm to where I'm at, what it's showing me is I've got an error of about 24 thousandths in this movement. Yeah, I'd like it to be a little bit tighter, but now that I'm in the situation here where I've got these cones placed on some, some underbody that looks like it's been rust proofed, I'm on the hoist, there might have been a little bit of movement on the hoist since I've measured the cones. So 24th thou, I still think that's okay, but what I want to do is I can show you here in the driver's side front cone, that's where the 24th thou is actually coming from. That's giving me the worst of the max error. So what I'm going to say is, okay, let's go to this omit click him and say yes let's omit that cone and do a continue okay now it resolves for that device position and now look my max error is about 12 thou 12 thou I'm much better with that than the 24 I saw prior and it looks like it's coming out of the passenger side rear cone so for this reverse engineering project it's okay I'm all right with that 12 thou if I was measuring a tool and doing some inspection to that tool that's a totally different story and then I might want to re-establish those cones so right now I'm in a good spot to do the measurement on the rear end of this, of this vehicle. And I haven't done anything yet. I just wanted to do a quick example of this leapfrog for you uh, before I got into the measurement session. So very easy to do. Don't be afraid of the leapfrog. It takes your, in this case, it takes your 12 foot arm. It makes that guy 24 foot, which is perfect. And right now I'm just gonna continue measuring in the back end of this. So go ahead and try this with your system as well.